Section 4, Appendices, Appendix 1, an Epilogue. First of all, let me thank you for choosing to live on Earth. Sharing this slice of time and space, I certainly know the trials and tribulations that you've gone through because I've experienced them too. More than you can imagine, you've made a great sacrifice to be here now, whether you call yourself a wanderer or not, and in less time than you imagine, you will be back home among your kindred souls in the greater realms of light. This is not a prediction, it's just the next phase of the cycle. Secondly, let me thank you for reading this book, and for opening your mind to consider the quality of light that I'm bringing. Because of your seeking, I am here, and therefore I have this opportunity to set in words some of the light that I've come to know. Making use of our body-mind-spirit, we can enjoy various qualities or frequencies of light, all of which are basically modulations of the one light, the limitless light, or what's called Ein Sof in the Hebrew Kabbalah. All that is expresses the one infinite creator, which is none other than you too. And the more you know it, the more you will see that even the body-mind-spirit complex which we use is not three, but rather one, the one. As I've written many times in many ways, you hold the key to your destiny, no one else. So be careful. Any source which leaves you with the impression that unbalanced alien groups or negative ETs can truly control you is most likely distorted by those very same deluded ET groups who deny the existence of the omnipotent loving higher self and their very own essence. No matter what negative schemes and agendas come down the line in the next decade or so before our third density earth harvest, you yourself are the master of your fate. If you work hard and truly direct your will into developing love and balance, you will make the most of this opportunity on earth and open to even greater contact with true self. We can make great effort, or we can make little effort. And of course, no one is perfect, at least in time and space. Having read this book, I hope you're left with a sense that care in self-reflection is most important. And each moment we live can be approached in a spirit of love and appreciation that all aspects of personal experience can be accepted without blame or judgment and that all essential resources for our transformation lie within ourselves all the time. The best teaching helps us return to ourselves and the finest light that any teacher offers will simply echo the quiet being of your own inner light, the still presence of core self. What you need, you already have and what you seek, you already are. Know, too, that you're not alone, and rather than latching onto the words of channels and invisible ET helpers, you can be quiet and clear your own mind in greater self-acceptance, and then be aware of their, or rather our, presence around you, which it is all the time. Far better to activate your own higher senses than to play around with the words of someone else. If you seek benevolent ET contact, be still and know that I am here, as the quote goes. In Buddhism, there's a distinction between living Zen and dead Zen. The former is here, now, potent, beyond all thought, and the latter is just that old finger pointing to the moon, rehashing old spiritual notions, disconnected to the silent, potent present moment. As Ra said, the moment contains love. But we really cannot feel this and know this unless the mind is still. And when it is still, we naturally feel this calm, and naturally we feel alive. We all follow a path to the present, seeking the limitless light ever alive in the moment. Along such a pathless path, all the results of previous choices and mind-body-spirit distortions come up for consideration. And the speed of our healing and integration depends wholly on how we meet ourselves in the moment. As I have written before, the essential qualities of inner healing are self-acceptance, self-appreciation, balanced love and wisdom, and ultimately forgiveness and trust, no matter what we're going through. We meet ourselves each moment, each day, and with the intensity and density of current Earth Catalyst, we have a huge opportunity to fine-tune love, and so unfold even more of what we are. Of course, the next 15 years will see a lot of change, which is actually an understatement. Despite any and all outer upheaval, the real question centers on how well we use the outer changes for balanced inner growth. It is said that the true yogi or seeker of the divine will not flinch, even when the mountain before him comes crashing down. 
Without being dramatic, I think we will see a lot of mountains come crashing down before the harvest time, and though most of us will flinch, these inconveniences will certainly offer hard training in the fine arts of peace and self-reliance. All the three major virtues will be tested: love, wisdom, and will. And so you might ask the following questions over and over again: Can I accept what's happening before me? Do I understand what's happening before me? Can I really stand in my own power? Of course, we always can, and more and more, I think we will be able to prove it to ourselves. Please know that you are loved and that you're not alone, which is a reflection far more useful than following strange lights in the sky and tired government cover-ups. Just remember that your spiritual family is all around you, doing what they can to help you and help you help others. Thus, we return to universal service. Which is not only the province of walk-ins and wanderers, but of all souls who follow the path of love in truth. The moment-to-moment -moment choice to be still, listen, and help, care and receive is most empowering, and it holds the promise of tremendous self-purification to clear the channels through which we receive higher dimensional light. As always, choice in the moment is ours. We all thank you, and we all work as one. Truly believe in yourself, and truly know that all you seek is already who you are. The path is now.